So I'm not sure about the run game, and I'm not sure about Gardner Minshew, but there's three things I'm sure about. Little Devontae making plays, A.J. Brown making plays, and Dallas Goddard made, making plays. Even with Minshew being bad, even with the run game being sketchy, those three brothers stood up and made plays. So, whew, whew, whew. I'm relying on them guys. <laughs> All That's right, so the Philadelphia Eagles do have another game to play, believe it or not. Besides the Dallas Cowboys game, this upcoming game could be the end all be all, especially we all want Jalen Hurst to play and his injuries are piling up. So this upcoming matchup, Simone, how do you feel facing this Saints, this nine and six cents team that Jalen Hurts have owned since he's been the starting quarterback for the Philadelphia Eagles, including doing a molly wop on them last year as a number one, number one, the uh, two rank defense, and his rookie year being the number one defense. How do you feel about going into this matchup? Let's start with what you said. Jalen Hurts has owned not Gardner Minshew, first of all. <laughs> Second of all, <laughs> second of all, I'm gonna keep it a buck and I'm gonna keep it a bean with you. I honestly think Jalen didn't practice today. It's Wednesday. Heck, he probably if I had to bet, he it's a walkthrough though. It, what today That's will uh, was That's just a true. walkthrough. If he don't participate tomorrow, I feel like he's not playing. Thursday, I feel like is the most pivotal day. So. Mm -hmm. But I do believe, even with Gardner Minshew playing, Gardner Minshew put up 27 points um, versus Dallas. The little boys. They still some little boys. Little boys win something every now and again, but they still some little boys, okay? Minshew just happened to be the littler of the boys on Christmas Eve. But I do feel like our offense will keep us in this game. Out of all the bad and ugliness we talked about, A.J. Brown, Devontae Smith, and Dallas Goddard right. made plays all game long. I do believe our offense, like our offense kept us in position to win that game against Dallas, the little boys, I do think there will not be two fumbles in this game. They, If Gardner is playing, they're going to be practicing with Gardner all week, we would think. There will not be two fumbles in this game. There won't be. I do think our offense is more high-powered than – even with Gardner Minshew, then the Saints offense. So I do believe we will be able to score on the Saints, and that will keep us in this game. Jalen Hurts or no Jalen Hurts. And hopefully this defense, which was ugly, but again, put in a lot of bad field position, a lot of bad positions, mm -hmm. will tighten up. So I do feel confident. We will not have a busted third and 30 again. Andy Dalton ain't no Dak Prescott. Dak Prescott is a better quarterback than Andy Dalton. I don't think the Saints will be able to keep up with us offensively. Even if our defense does let us down, it's been very, very, very few times this season where our offense has wavered. King? Uh, one, thing I, one thing I could say is when the defense does have a bad game, they do try to bounce back. You know, they all were basically saying that they always trying to say basically you know we had a bad game we need to win this one and and get our rest basically we we got to get our rest james bradbury came out and said a couple of other players came out and said it um also um like uh simone said it doesn't really matter at the end of the day because it's not our call who starts hurts or Minshew. but um i believe that we can still go out here and win one with Minshew, regardless of how garbage time or garbage as uh one of the comments said that he played against the cowboys which though i think he played as a, a backup quarterback you know he showed that he wasn't a starter in this league um but then again but the bias me i do want them to get out here and win <laughs> because i will be at that game <laughs> on, on sunday so I need, I need them to get out here and, and, and handle business so we can go and rest up, man. I don't even want to care about the Giants next week. Yeah, look, hey, I'm feeling pretty good about this game, man. Like, I haven't seen the, the Eagles lose two games all year. Have y'all? 
No. I have it. I mean, okay. maybe we... JC, JC, JC. Again, don't get me wrong. I love this energy that you have. <laughs> and I really, I'm not even being sarcastic. I wish I had this energy. But let's keep in mind, we have not seen a Eagles team under Jalen Hurts lose two games this season. Keep that in mind. <laughs> yeah, but at the same time, I believe in our defense. Six sacks. The past four games, this is history we're talking about. Who's going to stop this defensive front? Josh Sweat is having a monster year. Hassan Reddick, monster year. Fletcher Cox looked like, you know, five years ago, Fletcher Cox from 2017, Fletcher Cox. Hargrave is blown out. I mean, Slade, Bradbury, they are angry. They are hungry to have a bounce back game. Trust me. So that's what I'm saying. Andy Dalton put zero fear in my heart okay if you're talking about Camaro maybe maybe Camaro but besides that they have nobody else that should be able like no CD Lamb no Zeke no Pollard like no Schultz like no Gallup no TY 30 88 years old as on the field like <laughs> there's none of these guys playing on Sunday so to me at home at the length that is why we want home field advantage. Like, regardless who's the starting quarterback or not, the being at the length is a different vibe. It's a different feel to it. Yes, these boys haven't played at, at the length in three weeks. This is their first home game in three weeks. So mm -hmm. I'm telling you, they're going to be hungry. You know, they're pissed off. Thanksgiving was probably, maybe, you know, depend. Like, salty for them, whatever. Um... But that's why I'm like, man, there's no way. We should treat we should treat this game like the Pittsburgh Stiller game. The only guy they had was Najee Harris. That's it. They had nobody else. Najee Harris, you, you stopped the run game. You stopped their whole system. Andy Dawn, I watched him all year. He's going to throw picks after three. You, you threw three damn interceptions and was still in the game. Mm -hmm. Like, I'm like, why are you not putting Jameis Winston in? I don't know. So, I'm just saying, this upcoming Sunday, I have no fear. I feel like at the length, we're going to clinch the number one seed. It is what it is. You call me delusional. You call me, you know, um, biased, whatever No, it is, that's a good I point. Have... You, did, you did make a good point about how long it's been since we've been at home. That is a really good point. And again, some stuff we've seen out of the defense was mischaracteristic. Some of the play calling was mischaracteristic. Um, Darius Slay giving up that pass interference. That was mischaracteristic. And I don't think they will make some of the same mistakes that they made in back-to-back -back games. I do agree with that. Yeah, and Gar look, Gardner Minshew is not playing under the bright lights. You know what I mean? Like, I'm telling you, he looked like he was scared on Christmas Eve. This is a 1 o'clock game against the Saints. I feel like a second game under his belt, a second full week of taking first team reps, he will do better. And we will do better. And and I feel like that we will run the ball better. The first mm. yo people saying yes we had like like uh 21 22 rushes. It mm. was in the second half. The first half was like only six rushes. Yeah. I was like why ain't we running the ball? We we wasn't running the ball the first half at all. Menchie would had more passing yards. Dak Prescott had less passing rush than Zeke and Paul had rushing yards. The Dallas Cowboys was running the ball, running the ball, running the ball. We were throwing the ball, throwing. That's not us. That's not us. That's not us. You know what I mean? So, and Dallas Goddard is back? Man, I'm sleeping in, in this game. Go ahead. <laughs> now, don't Go ahead, think King. Nah, um, nah, I'm sleep though. <laughs> but yeah, um, I agree. I agree. Like, you know, that's not us running the ball. But that just goes to my point that, you know, our run running game has been more effective with Jalen Hurts under the center. But Gardner Minshew was not that type of threat that's going to get uh, Miles Sanders or Kenneth Gainwell or Boston Scott going um, to actually, you know, be a threat. Because since Jalen Hurts is that threat, you got to be accountable for him in the RPO. So, that has helped us do along the way. Um, but I agree. I think the running game should should um, should actually pick up. But we do need extra blocking since Lane is out there. 
So that that's what I'm gonna be looking for on you know Driscoll or whoever it is, whoever whatever they decide to do, get into that situation where it's though that hey, next man up mentality, and we need to go out here and get this number one seed. And that's all I'm looking for. That's it. That's all we're looking for. And I saw this post on Twitter, man. Some, you know, some 40, 50,000 follower guy posted was like, God damn, we get a pissed off Eagle team that is fighting for a number one seed and a lower draft pick. Yo, we got and not, <laughs> not one not two but That's three true. things going for us we're mad we pissed off that we shit the bet that we wet the bet on on christmas eve we're fighting for number one seat to lock this up and our draft pick is them saints them saints is holding our draft pick so we have everything to go out there at the link and play for they have really nothing really i mean just to get a higher you know um a lower uh draft seat but Look, it is what it is. But just going into this game, go ahead. Are you got Simone? We have something oh, to no, say? I'm, I'm agreeing with you. That's facts. <laughs> okay. All right. We do have, so, I mean, we have multiple reasons. Like you said, we got all the motivation factor is all on our side. It's three reasons why we should win this game. One, we just had an ugly game. Two, we could get the number one seed. Three, like you said, draft pick implications. So if they don't win this game, <laughs> Pack it up, birds. You finished. Oh. <laughs> well, I don't know about finish. We do have the little giants coming up, though. But still, at home, at the link, I will be at that game. But still, I know what you're saying. We have, look, we all want to pack it up this game right here. Because we it's need our rest. Pack it up. It's time to pack it up. We done play, been playing with our food it is. too long. <laughs> it, yo, it is time to pack it up. But is it finished? If we don't win this game, I don't know. Because Jalen Hurts will be back before the end of the season. But, you know, it's what it is. So, the defense of game plan heading into this Sunday game. So, what do you want to see, King? What do you want to see as far as the defense-wise? Like I said, six-plus sacks, four games in a row. Unheard of. This team got more sacks than a lot of teams. And four games had whole season. So what do you want to see from this defense heading into this Sunday matchup at home? More aggressive play caller from uh, Jonathan Gannon. First things first. Also, continue to, with that streak of the six plus sex. Um, being able to stop Alvin Kamara, man. You know, Alvin Kamara is an explosive player, especially when healthy or in the right system. And as right now, you know, I already know that they are in uh, playoff contention. They could, they could, they could make the playoffs if right. stuff goes yeah. right. But they want, they want to win this game. So we cannot go in there slouching like, oh, it's just the Saints. Saints. We got to go in there like we want the number one seed. We want the uh, NFC East division. We also want the the higher um, pick, as you said. You know, we want all those things. So you y'all going to give me that? That's what I want to see when I'm I'm at the stadium <laughs> on Don't Sunday. Don't jinx us do... out there at that game either. No, I'm not jinxing nobody. <laughs> this I ain't jinxing nobody. Does not have a good record this season being at the game. Oh wait! Oh yeah! I mean, whoa, hey. whoa, 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 whoa! I wasn't now. at the game. I wasn't at the game. I was at. Yo, at you been to a game this year? Week three. Well, I was at okay. three. We got okay. nine sacks. You're one and one then. All right. What game did and you get at? In week 18. <laughs> and, and I will be in uh, um, week 18 against the Giants. But last year, I was 3 0 <laughs> last year. Yeah, I okay. guess. That's all I'm saying. But put that bad juju on. on this damn podcast. Everybody no, was like, I was bad <laughs> up being at the game. Hey, I mean, you're pretty. But it wasn't just you know. my first time being at the game. Rachel from Bleeding Green Nation, it was her first game. Bird game um, 31. Bird game, it, was, it, was of us. it was three people, three podcasters. <laughs> It the bird game was sleep. It was me. He was sleep in the game, though. He was sleep. Yeah, so. he was sleep. Oh, yeah, I so. saw that. He went too hard at the tailgate, boy. So, so, what's your defensive game plan for this upcoming Sunday? And then we, and then we go on transition to the office game plan and give me your keys to victory and get out of here. 
Um, like we, we mentioned against the game against the little boys, we got to keep that pressure early. We should be getting to Andy Dalton early. We shouldn't even give them a chance to test Josiah Scott. We shouldn't give them a chance to test Reed Blankenship. We need to take Andy Dalton. We need to take Alvin Kamara out the game. And Alvin Kamara, he a little pass catcher. He a little running back. He be doing a little Swiss Army knife type of stuff. So we got to take yeah, him yeah. out completely. And again, it's going to start with the defensive pressure. We can't wait till the fourth quarter to now. I mean, we had the pick six, but after that, what was going on? Nothing. The, the defensive line is our strongest unit right now on defense. Even with Jordan Davis out, Linval and Adana Kasu have shown that they can step up. We don't know what's going yeah. on down in that secondary with Reed starting to show his undrafted free agentness and Josiah Scott starting to show himself out there. So we yeah. don't even need them testing the waters in the secondary. Up front, we got to bring that pressure pack. It's no excuse for the defensive line. That is my defensive game plan. Keep your eye on Alvin Kamara and little Chris Olave. Uh, Chris oh, Olave. Oh, oh, oh. But also, also, uh, uh, Taysom Hill, they probably going to try to run some plays for him, too. Ain't nobody worried about no 55. I'm just saying. Taysom Hill. <laughs> 55. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I'm just saying. Yeah. I mean, yeah. Hey, look. Look. He is right, though, because the Philadelphia Eagles have had a little issue with mobile quarterbacks. But every time he comes in, look, that's not to my ten. He's going to try to run. But the Philadelphia mm -hmm. Eagles showed this past Sunday that they stopped Zeke and Pollard from running the ball. But, but like you said, Alvin Kamara, remember, this was one of my bad. The flats was open. So how could our scheme, you know what I mean, help the players get there and stop Kamara from the flats? Because I, I feel like that's how they are going to be competitive. Not beat us. But be competitive if we are constantly just giving up screens and flats wide open. Because Zeke and Pollard, the most successful night was against, you know, when Dak was rolling out, the flats was wide open. There was nobody there. No linebacker. Where the hell was TJ Edwards? I don't know. Kaiser White? I don't know where the hell he was at. The, the running back was like right there. Oh, okay. Okay. Thank you. Wide open. Like just like just wait. There's nobody e even looking at him. So Camaro, he's definitely got the capability of you know just being that guy. So, but as far as the offensive side, who like I know we talk about the, the defensive scheme, right? You know what you like to see, but who's your biggest threat on on the Saints offensive side? Like I mean, Camaro. Camaro. Like, he's had. I mean, Chris Olave. He's shown some promise and like he has a future, but I don't see Chris Olave tearing it up against us. Like his hamstring is bad too. Yeah. I mean, yeah, like Chris Olave, he like I said, he's he's shown some promise here and there. He could maybe do something in the future, but he has not shown that he's a weapon to be worried about. He's been right doing now. great for me in fantasy right all year. I don't know. He's been hey, doing great he's for been you. And, and, and fantasy all year. Absolutely. Oh, you got him? What he been doing? Uh, he's been giving me double-digit points in fantasy every game. Besides last game, that he was out mm. because of um of a bad hamstring. So okay, that's so maybe the thing. we need to watch is out he, for a little If he lives. plays, yo, if he plays, it's going to be a tougher game because mm -hmm. of his his speed. You know what I mean? He's from, you know, hey. That's oh, a big Lord, team. I can see Darius yo, Slay trying to chase him right now Yo, oh, he's a big Rose 10 guy eyes. so they might put him in a slot man for he he does oh play the lord slot Scott, <laughs> hey. he does oh, play the lord. he does Jesus. play the slot too That's and got saying. away their big body wide receiver yeah. um so look i'm not gonna sleep on the saints but i'm sleeping just a little bit i'm taking a nap I'm taking a nap. And I, I'm not like. I don't need like, the Eagles taking no dang naps. Nope. <laughs> nope. Come Red I'm Bull, dog. No. I need them to own it, Red Bull, and, and, and going out. And after that's everybody. why I said, get that. The only thing we got, the only thing we can be comfortable with on defense is the defensive line. Again, they've been wreaking havoc all season long. They slept in those first three quarters. Yes. Those are the guys. Now, again, Josiah Scott needs to do better. Slay can have a better game. 
read Blankenship could have a better game. But who's been the most consistent all season long for us? The defensive line. Those are the guys I'm relying on in this game. Take, that should be a non-factor. If we get it home, hit it home, putting that pressure on Andy Dalton. Take Olave out of the game. Take Kamara out of the game. Don't even test Reed. No, it shouldn't even have to test Josiah. The defensive line is who we gonna have to rely on this game. Bring that pressure pack. Cause Dalton can't do it under pressure. That's all I'm saying. But also, I, look, I see this game being like a Vikings game. Um, let me see, like kind of like the um, the Vikings and- The Vikings, you mean week two when we was fully healthy? Right. <laughs> I say but no, 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 no. Uh, the Vikings, well, I mean, look, we've been fully healthy all year though. So you can't Not really- Not fully healthy. We've been without Avante. We've been without CJ Gardner Johnson. Uh, we've been out Dallas Goddard. So, no, we have not yeah. been – Jordan Davis. We mm -hmm. have not been fully healthy. So, what is you saying? Yeah. The Cardinals game, we had several linemen go out. Jason Kelsey went out against the Cardinals. What is you saying, JC? What? Well, <laughs> as far <laughs> as the defensive pressure getting to the quarterback and the balls oh, are – Matter of fact, line. Cooper Rush, yes. Oh, you know okay, what I mean? Okay. This is going to be a Dallas Cowboys – Minnesota Vikings week two, week six type of thing. You get to the quarterback, the ball just come like floating in the air. And anybody could catch that. Uh, against Andy Dalton, this dude is interception after interception machine. So we get pressure to Dalton. Everything agreed, else agreed. is X out to me. But give me y'all three keys to victory and y'all score prediction for this upcoming Sunday. 1 p.m. New Year's Wait, we never day. said keep to the office. Yeah, like, we skipped something. Uh, you got a date uh, tonight? Y'all going out to dinner or something? No, I didn't hear you. <laughs> no, all right. Hey, talk to me. All right, so talk to me. You better be off that line by 8.30. <laughs> nah, nah, nah. Look, this thing's defense, regardless what their office are doing, I watch them play all season long. They are always tough up front with uh, Cameron Jordan, with the DeMarco Davis. Uh, um, so, yep. So, and and don't forget the shutdown corner that they have, Lushon, Lattimore. So, mm -hmm. what is the offensive game plan going into this game? Even though the past couple of years, they've been number two, number one, and rush defense, overall defense, we gashed them. With Jalen Hurts, but like Simone said, Simone said, this is not Jalen Hurts. Okay, so what is your offensive game plan, Simone, going into this game? My offensive game plan, and again, I'm not worried about the offense. My offensive game plan is A.J. Brown making plays. Check, he did that. Dallas Goddard making plays. Check, he did that. A.J. Brown making plays. Check, he did that. Sadly, you can't game plan with Gardner Minshew because one, we don't know what the heck he's going to look like at 1 p.m. on Sunday. And two, we want to get the run game going, of course, establishing the run. But is the run game going to be as good without Jalen Hurts? Because again, we don't have that threat, those little fake handoffs. They know Gardner Minshew isn't running. So I think that hurt our run game a little bit last game of them, of us not having that dual, you know, fake it to Miles. Cause some y'all, our fakes was going crazy. It'll be plenty of times I'm watching the game. I don't know if Jalen or Miles got the ball. So I know that yeah. they was faking out them defenders. We don't have that dynamic with Jalen Hurst out the game. So I'm not sure about the run game and I'm not sure about Gardner Minshew, but there's three things I'm sure about. Little Devonte making plays, AJ Brown making plays, and Dallas Goddard made, making plays. Even with Minshew being bad, even with the run game being sketchy, those three brothers stood up and made plays. So, whoo, whoo, whoo! I'm relying on them guys. <laughs> King, I'm relying on Shane Steichen trying to establish the run early, even though we are going against a tough team on the run, um, because that opens up the playbook. Um, like Simone said, these receivers, we, they've been reliable all year. You, you know, the numbers and the stats speaks for itself. Um, also on, on, on offense, I want to see how 
our offensive line block with injuries to it. You know, that's what I'm looking to see. Um, what else? Just just being able to just be dominant, you know, be dominant um, on, on, on that side of the ball to the point that we're scoring points and not just settling for three or just three and outs. I don't want to see um, a backtrack of what what um, we didn't see with the Dallas Cowboys game, whereas though we didn't punt. You know, we want to score points. So I want this to be over quick to the point where, you know, we already celebrating us being the number one seed before I leave that damn stadium. <laughs> Okay, look, Devontae Smith, to me, and Dallas Goddard, those two guys are going to have to be it. Because I feel like that the Saints defense, like Simone said, the defensive front have no RPO to worry about. There's no RPO, and that's what they struggle with the past couple of years. There's no mm-hmm. Jalen Hurst to, you know, trying to say, who got the ball? It's Miles Sanders, Gainwell, Boston Scott, and Menchu, slow as molasses ass. As. And we saw this past Christmas Eve. This right. dude cannot get outside and gain no more than a yard. I feel like every time Menchu start running, he's about to pull a hammy. It's like a struggle bus. It's like, like, Mr. Mike's like, come here, you. Where you going? Where you going? Like, he's so slow. I'm like, oh my God. Joe Hurst would have got that first down. Jalen Hurts would have got that touchdown. Jalen Hurts, like, the whole game. Oh, I missed that man, Jalen, boy. I'm like, I'm like, boy. And now I hope that y'all Eagle fans realize what type of quarterback you have. A quarterback that could keep the defensive line, the defensive Mm -hmm. coordinators up at night, preparing for a dual threat quarterback, not a Gardner Minshew type, you know, type running offense. So I feel like that Goddard being back, Man, it could not come at a better time. Him being back, making right. these tough catches. And look, <laughs> Mitchell got to look. <laughs> oh, Devontae Smith made some outstanding catch. AJ Brown, Dallas got her, but God damn, Mitch, you about to set them up. Like them knees, the rib shots. I'm like, oh my God. Like every time he throw the ball, I'm holding my damn rib right there. Mm-hmm. Yo, because it's like defenders are coming mm-hmm. left and right. There's no clean throws. It's like like everything is like tough catches. People was like, yeah, he threw for three something. These guys, the talent on this team is the reason why he had 300 something right. yards, you know, like passing. It wasn't meant you delivering the ball on time, on target. Right. Devontae Smith, like, Torquing his body. Exactly. Like, what the hell is going exactly. on? You know, the sideline. Yo, these are throws that that Jalen Hurts could probably make a little bit easier because of the rapport he had with these guys. Mm-hmm. So definitely Goddard, Sanders, um, uh, uh, Goddard and Smith, yeah. because I feel like that Lattimore is That's gonna be up. on AJ Brown the whole game, and he does travel. So just take advantage, man. Look, they. they Put your pot aside, go to Smith, go to Goddard, run the ball, and just, just do what you can because uh, this is not going to be a two, 300 yard rushing game like we had the past couple of times we faced the Saints. We had over 200 yards at both mm-hmm. times with Jalen Hurts. This is probably going to be like a 120, 130 type of game. All Miles Sanders game well. But yeah, so. And if Miles plays. If Miles Sanders plays, because what's up with him and his little knee? <laughs> yeah, man. Look, all we yeah. heard was he had a knee injury. If the game was today, he wouldn't even practice. Mm-hmm. So I'm hoping over the next couple of days oh, he gets some loads. Um, but we'll see. <laughs> but know? if Miles plays, Miles got to step up. I'm not saying he hasn't Absolutely. stepped up or he can't step up. But mm-hmm. I was expecting a little more from little Miles, especially since he's running for a contract. I was expecting a little bit more from Miles. I mean, it's only so much you can do, you know what I sure. mean? Going against a defensive line like that. But you, and we gonna need more from Miles this game. If he playing, you want that big money? Show us, do a little something, a little something extra, shake off a tackle, run, get, shake your leg out from a defender and burst off. Do a little something more, Miles. Just a little something <laughs> more. Yeah, and the play calling has to be better. 
we cannot be telling Minshew to throw it more in the first half than we run it. That's exactly what we did right. against the Dallas Cowboys. We threw it a lot more, at least 10 times more, at least 10 more passes than what we ran. And that Prescott was throwing at least 10 less than what the Cowboys was running. That's right. the type of offense we need. Yes, we understand that you, you, at your prize online, you're probably coaching for you know a, a head coaching job next year. I get it. But stick with what works. You have one of the best offensive line in football. Yes, Driscoll. Yes, look, it's hard. Just like you said that um, um, Josiah Scott got thrown in there on Christmas Eve. The same thing happened to Driscoll. If you watch that, we was at, at the 19-yard line. Driscoll is the reason why that Gardner Minshew did not complete that last throw. Because Driscoll got tripped up, got bull rushed, and was on his back. And Gardner Mitchell was looking down instead of looking ahead. That's the reason why we could not complete that last pass. So with another week of practice, and now Samalu, you know what I mean? Alternate Pro Bowl guard is there to help him out. With Kelsey, mm -hmm. look, it's going to take a team effort now. It's going to take a team effort with Lane Johnson being out. So but with another week of practicing and getting together, um, I feel like that we will be fine. Look, we, we've been doing this all last mm -hmm. year. The thing is, this office alignment, they all have experience, even Dillard That's from last true. year. Because so, like, man, this ain't no, like, uh, um, you know, anything new for us. We've been doing the next man up now. It's time to prove it. With the stakes are higher, the number one seed on the line, you know, home field advantage throughout, uh, clinching this playoffs, you know, spot number one. But we'll see what happens. Let the mm -hmm. game so, begin. Let the game begin. So now, let's go through to our three keys of victory, Simone. But I'm going to play devil's advocate. Tell me three reasons why that the Saints could win this game. Three, three keys for the Saints and then three keys to the Philadelphia Eagles victory. Um, <laughs> honestly, it's all- the sense we won this game, what would happen? Okay, what would they have to do? The Eagles to win this game, one, that pressure pack up front. Like I keep saying, we got to bring that pressure up front. We got to- we got to make Andy Dalton struggle throughout the whole game to get the ball off. Struggle. He should be scampering. He should be on the run. He should be throwing the ball out of bounds. Punting, punting, punting from the Saints. Like I keep saying, our defensive line has been the strongest and most consistent and the most healthy right now. So the defensive line bringing that pressure pack to the, the, our, our pass catches. Devontae, AJ Brown, and Dallas Goddard. Again, they're one of the they're the second most consistent thing this season, honestly. And we got Dallas Goddard back. We saw how much the even though we were winning, we saw how much the offense struggled with Dallas Goddard not being in the game. And we saw how big he was in the game against Dallas. So that's key number two. Again, the most consistent thing we have right now and the most healthy thing is Dallas. AJ and Devontae. Those guys have to step up and make plays. And they showed that last um, Sunday, Saturday, whatever it was. They mm -hmm. showed that. That's the key number two. Three, like we said, the run game. I'm not putting any confidence in that secondary. I don't know Reed like that. I don't know him like that. He's still new. I don't know Josiah like that. I don't. I ain't putting no confidence down there. So my second key is coming on offense again, just in case Reed getting cooked, just in case Zo Josiah getting cooked by little Chris Olave. Again, the offense will have to keep us in this game. Miles will have to run, 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 run. Now, how can the Saints win this game? Yes. Again, I don't know the Saints like that, but one way they could win, I don't, I don't, I don't know this. I don't even think I watched one Saints game this season long, but I will go with what our weaknesses are. One, quarterback. 
for the Saints to win, they're going to have to put that pressure on Gardner Minshew. Now, again, I don't know if they have those guys up front to do that, but they're going to have to put pressure on Gardner Minshew. He already showed he's not that accurate. His arm was a little noodle. He was making some weird throws that AJ and Devontae were having to be acrobats to catch. They'll have to put pressure on Minshew. They will have to stop our run game. And Chris so live. I don't know if Chris is playing, but they will have to take it. Yeah. Whoever's playing is going to have to take advantage of Josiah Scott. Yeah. Facts. Absolutely. And before I get you, uh, um, uh, I go to King. There was a question about. All right, here we go. What are your thoughts on Brenning and LeBlanc back? Because he is healthy. He tweeted out last week and some way, somehow an injury happened. He was on the Philadelphia Eagles 2017-2018 uh, um, um, team that picked off Drew Brees in the, the divisional round playoffs. What are your thoughts on bringing him back to the Philadelphia Eagles? I don't know. It's been a while. Like, we don't even have, yes. like, Jonathan Gannon is new. The reason why I was for Anthony Harris was because, one, we need depth. He knows Jonathan Gannon. He's been here recently. Jim Schwartz is gone, baby. I'm saying, Kirk, bringing in somebody this late that don't know the defense, don't know the defensive coordinator, don't know the team. Heck, we might be the same with Josiah Scott. So, I don't – it can't hurt to see what he can do. But I wouldn't have high expectations for him. How about that? Okay. All right. So, King, all right. Same question. And then give me your, you know, your three keys to victory for the Eagles. And if the Saints will some way, somehow defeat the Philadelphia Eagles, what do they have to do? There are three keys. I'm going to keep the LeBlanc thing short. Um, I think LeBlanc treat was just like, hey, big head. You know, that that's how it was for me. It was, hey, big head. Because he want, he he likes what he see, and he's like, yo, I still can perform. So you know, pick me. That's that's basically what it is. It's like an ex that's trying to get back. I don't I don't want that. You know, I'm cool with Josiah Scott, but he needs to play. He needs to play. He needs to show up this game. Period. If he show up against Chris Olave, then I might sit up there and, and make a whole video about him and make a play play by play on just him. Period. But let's get into the uh the three keys, man. So for the Saints, I'm gonna do the Saints first. Um, Saints got to stop our, our, our run game. You know, that's our foundation. It's been our foundation. Got to stop our run game, and we can't go away from that. But the run game needs to be stopped by the Saints. Um, they have to be able to get to Gardner Minshew before he's able to make a decision. Um, and also, and also, our defense, uh, not our defense, I'm, I'm, I'm on the Saints. They have to take advantage of, like what you, you pointed out, and I didn't even uh, pay attention to it. Um, then, and I'm just look, I'm playing it back in my head. Uh, that flat is always open, and Alva Kamara is good off the yards at the catch. So if they take advantage of that, then you know it could be a long, a couple long drops on the Eagles, which could get the defense tired. You know, we go into it, all the animosity and stuff like that from the last game, but then we get winded, then we get hurt. God forbid we don't, but that's that's what can happen. So we got to make this to the point where. Everything is cut off from the Saints. That's number one, you know, for the Eagles. Everything has to be cut off. Um, Chris Olave, all of them have to be cut off. You know, I want Josiah Scott to have a flawless game. I want him to have a flawless game because between him and the damn Kayvon Wallace of the world, every single time they come in, they pick on him. So now I know they're game planning for that. They're game planning for that. Uh, number two, our defense has to get to um um uh, Andy Dalton you know got to get to Andy Dalton and we got to be ready for when that hill guy come in because they're going to try to you know mix it up a little bit especially if Andy is struggling like he always did um and number 3 like i said the the o line our o line has to come and show up man because i already know that they can apply pressure and then they can also um affect our running game whereas though that now the passing game is obsolete because you know, now they can, they can play their game because they predicted what we're going to do. So we need to um, basically get everything um, with the O-line together to the point where we're winning that battle, at least. Look, the whole LeBlanc thing to me, um, it's cute, 
but no thanks. Anyway, um, <laughs> the three keys, the three keys for the Saints being the Philadelphia Eagles is to turn the damn ball over five, six times, maybe four or five times, like we did this past, you know, Christmas Eve. Um, another reason why uh, is to uh, get. Guess what? You you can't stop the run. Yeah. If you can't stop the run, the time of possession, especially if you start bringing in this dude called, uh, uh, man, what's that title name? Damn. What's his, that title name? I don't For know the Saints. Name. Oh, shoot. What's Damn, the title name? Know. He played quarterback. He, he got that big contract for them. What the? Yo, why am I going blank right now? We literally talked about him earlier. Hey, so are he you start talking coming, about are you, are you talking, talking about, about who? What are you talking about? The Saints tight end slash quarterback. This Taysom dude Hill? is the tight end. Taysom Hill. T yes, yeah. yes, Taysom Hill. <laughs> if we can't stop Taysom Hill and with, with Kamaro and, and then they start coming mm -hmm. in, we can't stop the run combined mm -hmm. with Taysom Hill and Kamaro. Again. So that's my second one. Oh, go ahead. Go ahead. Finish. I thought it was last one. No, go ahead. You good? No, go to your last one. All right, so and the last point I see the Saints could possibly do something is on special teams. Is if they get good field position from their special teams and kicking field goals. Of course, we know that special team for us is bottom of the list. But for everybody else, look at what Turpentine did. Turpentine did to us. You know what I mean? That dude had a good you know, what I mean? turn. I, I mean, look, so those are the three. You know what I mean? We can't stop the run, you know, you, um, the turnovers and on special teams. As far as the Philadelphia Eagles go, look, establish the run. I, it doesn't matter who's back there. You know, Jalen Hurts, Gardner Minshew, Nick Foles, you establish the run. That is your bread and butter. And then utilize your playmakers, your Dallas Goddard, your Devontae Smith. Do not try to force uh, force feed um, A.J. Brown if he's not open because LaShawn Lattimore is, is going to be on A.J. Brown. And guess what? Defensive line. This is your game to show up again. Why not make it five games in a row with six plus sacks in a row? Come on now. The defensive line definitely have to be on their P's and Q's. So, King, tell me, who do you have winning this game? And what is your score? 28-17 Eagles. 28-17 Eagles. Damn, that's it. Remember going on and going for 28 points? Okay, all right. Simone, who do you have winning this game? The Birds. I'm going to go. It's hard doing math with the scores. <laughs> I'm going to go. Um, I know. It, it is. It, it is. Oh, it's hard. But it's you hard. do your old score prediction. Well, no, no. You do the picks, huh? Yeah. I do the picks. I'm going to go yeah. 35. Because, again, what we showed we could do against a better defense. You know what mm. I mean? I'm going to go 35. You know, they're going to have more time together with men's shoes. <laughs> I'm going to go 35. <laughs> I like, I'm going to go 35. I like 14. Uh, okay. No, I meant 17. Look. I like 17. I like his 17. I'm going to go 35, 17. I always go with 17 because that is what the Philadelphia Eagles are averaging throughout the whole year. Besides the Dallas Cowboys, a 40 burger. Yes, sir. Mm -hmm. Yes, I understand. But throughout 90% of the year, 17 was the minimum. So I'm going to go definitely go with 17 points for the Saints. But I'm definitely go. Look, if Mitchell could put up 20, what, 27 points on the Dallas Cowboys with a better defensive front with, with Trayvon Diggs, uh, with the Dan Quinn calling the defense, uh, I'm going to go with 40. I'm going to go with 40 17, the Philadelphia Eagles. Okay. So before I go to the last thoughts, if you're watching on all platforms, Simone with the sports, King DV, and mine.
please make sure y'all hit that like button. Y'all been peeping in here all night, so don't hate on us. Don't be a creep. Hit that like button. Oh, they love creeping, know. boy. All the time. <laughs> a lot of creep. Oh. Yeah. All yeah. Like creeping. Yeah. <laughs> so hit that like button for us, man. It pushes our content out. And if you are new to any of our channel, our the all the link is in the description. We made it even simple for y'all. Just go to the description, click the link, and it's sending directly straight to their channel. Final word. We're going to start with Simone since you are the guest for tonight. What is your final word of the night? My final word is... <sighs> yeah, you usually say defense, but I have to say defensive line. Do not let me down. It's Andy Dalton. Please don't let me down. Defensive line. That's it. All right, King. Any final words? Uh, we left out of at and Stadium with blood in our mouth. And we need to start putting blood in other people's mouths, man. I didn't like that. Um, so we need to go out here and get this number one seed this week. I don't want to hear about, oh, we got another game. and No, we need to get it this week so people can start resting. So by the time we get after the bye week, then, you know, we know we got some hitters coming back. And 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 that's including Lane Johnson if he's coming back um, in, in, in that round or so, so forth. But we need to do that right now, right now. Um, I don't want to hear anything about no Cowboys game again. I don't want to hear anything. We got to worry about the Saints. Anybody JC, the only one who keep bringing them up. On, 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 on. <laughs> but um, talk about that for thirty five minutes. But but yeah, I, I like I don't care about that no more. That's why I never did. I didn't even do no videos uh, on it, man. A lot of people were saying, "Oh, you know, this the uh, my videos before the game." They was like, "Oh, this didn't age well." Things like that. They was poking the bear, but I'm like, "No, Mama you know what? Age well. I, I, am I am not. I am not." I am not doing it. I'm not going back and forth for no Cowboys content creators. I'm not. Or fans. Um, but no, we need to worry about, we really need to worry about this game, man. We need to get everybody um, healthy, back healthy for the playoffs. And this is the game to do it, man. I thought it was going to be uh, the last game, but, you know, it is what it is. This game needs to be it so we can have, what, a week, two, maybe three weeks prep to the point where we can get healthy. Look, my final word is this. Eagle fans, don't worry. We got this. We will be okay. I'm telling you right now. I have faith in this defensive line, Simone. I have faith in King. Look, King DV, we will get six-plus sacks. Watching Monday Night Football and doing play-by-plays throughout the whole season, you watch a lot of teams. Andy Dalton is buns. Yo, he's waiting to throw three, four interceptions when we haven't had one in a while. So I feel like that we will be fine. Dress, we're just going to wrap it up. And Gardner Mitchell will be better than last Sunday. Miles Sanders will not fumble again. You know, big play State will not get caught looking back. You know what I mean? Yo, we won't throw four interceptions or two interceptions and two fumbles and give up a third and 30. We will be fine. So just relax and enjoy Sunday, 1 p.m. It might not even be on primetime TV. Like, hey, you may have to have direct TV or water or fire stick to watch it. It's okay. But guess what? You can find it right here because I'll be doing a live play-by-play -play right here Sunday covering the Philadelphia Eagles versus the Saints. It's all good. But where can where could they find you at Simone? And then we're gonna go, go to King and then we out of here. Simone with a Y, S Y M O N E with the sports, <laughs> YouTube, TikTok, Instagram. <laughs> they love putting an eye where that Y go. Mm. <laughs> King. Man, uh, catch me on YouTube, King DV Sports, Facebook, um, Twitter. I'm, I'm heavy. I'm heavy on Twitter. Um, also, uh, TikTok. 
you know, I do my thing on there to try to try to you know funnel funnel some fans, TikTok. funnel some fans over to to my yeah. channel, man. I'm trying to get like y'all. Um, but also you can catch me at the game if you go into the uh, to the Saints game. You know, I'm gonna be there. Um, um, I'm gonna do a little tailgating before I get there, but um, it's Don't not gonna fall be heavy. Oh, I'm not. I'm not. No, I'm not BG. <laughs> I ain't BG. No shade, but I ain't gonna be no BG. No, no. But we gotta finish our food. We gotta finish our food. That's all I got to say. Yeah. Facts. Look, hey, JC Sports Talk 20 on Twitter and on Instagram, JC Sports Talk, and of course on YouTube, JC Sports and TikTok. Talk. But no TikTok. I'm too old for TikTok. <laughs> but you know what I mean? No, I'm too old for TikTok, man. Look, I got enough thumbnails. We're not doing dancing. Look, look, it took me about We're five hours to do a thumbnail. Yo, I ain't got time to act no extra stuff. This is somebody. where the money at, brother. Uh, you know I'm what? Gonna... Hey, let me hire you someone with the sports, and then you do my TikTok for me. Hey, how about that? It depends <laughs> how big that uh, budget is. We got to talk oh. good. <laughs> <laughs> yo, yo, look. It's all good, man. Hey, I appreciate all y'all tuning in. Please make sure y'all like, comment, subscribe. Regardless if you're an Eagles fan or Cowboys fan, it doesn't matter, man. We keep it happy. We keep it light. We keep it clean over here. And uh, as always, we will see y'all this upcoming Sunday or whenever we play each other. Go Birds.